now, okay? I'm doing nine now. Let's do nine now, okay? So nine, a resistor of 500 ohms and one of 2000 ohms are placed in series. So if I put them together, that's 2500 on a 60 volt. What will the reading on the voltmeter of the internal <coughs> resistor 2000 be when placed across the five? Okay, so that is what we did in class, the potential divider one. So uh, I've got 60 volts here. I've got um, <coughs> one here, one here. I've got a voltage here, and then I've got a voltage here. All right, so uh, it is 500 and 2,000. 500 and 2,000 ohms of resistance. <coughs> I'm just going to go straight into using the formula that I did for the potential divider. Remember the formula, this is V1 and this is V2. So you get V1 equals, uh, what was it? It was R1 over R1 plus R2 times V. Isn't that what I had in class last time? <coughs> okay. um, so that would be 500 over 2 times, well, it's 12. I think. And then on the other one, I get V2 equals R2 over R1 plus R2 V. So that would be 2000 over 2500, four fifths of 60. 48? They're the answers I got for it. Um, what's the answer at the back? It's not this? 10 and 40. It can depend on the question. They don't add up to 60. Wait, did you, did you use internal resistance for the voltmeter? It's 2,000. Why would they mention it's big R and small R? That's 500, 2,000. I got the same answer as you. <coughs> yeah. Um. What did you say the answer back was 4 and 40 and 10, yes. which is 50. So is it possible that in the question that they meant to say 50 volts instead of 60 volts? say 50 volts because everybody else got these two numbers Not and <coughs> what did you get you got 10 and 40 yeah. huh but you did it wrong you got the answer at the back hang on one at soon soon did you get this answer? No. Did you get 12 and 48? No. What did you get? I got... Is it 99? Yes. <laughs> 10 and 40. 10 and 40? Yeah. If I done something... 2,500... 560... Did you do it the same way? Yeah. So... What the heck happened? <laughs> Look at the calculator. Yeah? yeah. So we did... Don't you is yeah. there internal resistance? Yeah, there is internal resistance. Oh! Yeah. There's internal resistance as well. So this actually is different to the potential divider one. Okay. So, how much is the internal resistance? 2,000. So let me just undo those last two lines. Okay, so where does it this resistor go <coughs> on the diagram? Sorry? This 2000? It's on the voltmeter. It's on the voltmeter. So where does it go? Where would I draw it here? Yeah, there's like there's another 2000 here. So it's in parallel. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. So when we add these together, 
we have to use the 1 over R formula. Yeah. So 1 over R equals 1 over 500 plus 1 <coughs> over 2000. So what do we get for R in the end? 400. Huh? 400. 400? Yeah. For the R. Yeah. Okay. And then we have to do the same thing here when we move the voltmeter or use the same <laughs> voltmeter. Uh, it's R is, what's yeah. it going to be? Um, it's going to be 2000. 1000. 1, 1, yeah, okay. So now the formula should be V1 equals 400 over 1400 times 60. What's that? No? V1 400 over 10,000. Oh, sorry, sorry. 2400. What? Why 2400? Is I'm taking this as one resistor of 400. Yeah, but yeah, it's only it's last 2000. But this resistor here is together. No, it's, different. it's different. No, it's a different part of the question. Like part A, part A part says that the equivalent resistance is at above. Ah, yeah. okay. And the B says they're <laughs> using they're they're moving the voltmeter yeah, down. Yeah. So actually, this isn't here at the moment. This is gone. It's just the two thousand. Yeah. So then it's two thousand four hundred. Thank you. And does that come out as ten? Ten. Okay. And is there a second part where they move it down? Yes. <coughs> ah, so then we move it down to the next one. So in the second case, then it would be not four hundred here, but. 500 and then in the other one it's 1000 so it would be 1000 over 1500 yeah. times 60 and that equals 40 now why does this not equal 60 why does it only equal 50 well because it's like you said it's two different problems it's 10 in the first problem and 40 in the next one you're not doing the two voltages at the same time so that's why it doesn't total 60. Okay. That was a good question. Um, that would be like half of a section B question. Half? Half, half yeah. It's, when this comes up in section B, there's usually two circuit diagrams. A smaller one and a bigger one. So this would be half a section B question. First, if you get a circuit diagram in section A, it will be like, you remember the potential divider I did yesterday? It'd be that big. Okay, question? No? It's okay. Uh, we'll continue then. So like I said, this is like a section B, half a section B question. Okay. All right, next now. <coughs> There it is. Yes. Okay. Can I scroll down? Yeah. Nine. So we did potential divider as a special circuit yesterday. So here's another type of special circuit we'll need to know. Uh, Wheatstone bridge. This is page 16. I want to show you for your circuit diagrams. This is called the galvanometer. And the only thing a galvanometer does is tell you if you have a current or not. So this just tells you if there is an I or no I. That's all it can do. It can't tell you anything else. It can't tell you how big. It just tells you current or no current. That's its only job. Okay? 
Yes? So galvanometer, the G, all it does, circuit or uh, current or no current. Okay, so let's draw the Wheatstone Bridge. Um, I'll draw it nearly the same as in the book. Okay. Uh, scrolling down now. Okay. <coughs> so we have battery. Battery. Resistor. Resistor. And then resistor. Makes a square here. And then resistor. Uh, and then there's a galvanometer in the middle. Yeah. And then running through the middle here, there's a G. Okay. Now this symbol here is the battery symbol. Please note, the bigger line is the plus and the smaller line is the minus. And we always go plus to minus. Okay. So we have plus going around this way. All the way around. Okay. Now, Oh, and I should put in the values, sorry. The resistors, uh, come on. Uh, we'll just call this one here R1, R2, R3, R4. And the <coughs> other important thing you need to know is that G equals zero. So there's no current running down the middle. Okay, so let's see what equations we can make with this circuit. Last time with our potential divider, we got an equation for V1 and V2. So let's see what we can make with this one. The current starts at plus, goes around here, and it splits. Splits. So if I call this I, then here I call this one I1, and I call this one here I2. But what happens here? Splits again, doesn't it? So I'll do that in red. So splits, 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 splits. And then it comes back together at the end here, so it goes back to I then. Let me zoom in a bit for you. Oh, too much. Are those easy? Now, which one? No, 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 they could all be different values, yeah. Now, in the middle, there's no current, okay? But uh, you can see that there's two currents going towards the galvanometer. But the galvanometer says there is no current. So what do you think is happening in the middle? Yeah, They're cancelling, which means they must be the same. They must be the same. So I don't know what they are, but I know that they're the same, so that they cancel. Okay. Now just so you know, if you look at the book, they just call it P, Q, R, and S, but I call it R1, R2, R3, and R4. Uh, okay. At balance, no current flows through G. Therefore, the potential difference across BD, which is what they call the center, uh, equals the potential difference across AD, which is what they call that one there. Okay. BD, AB, sorry, AB and AD. AB and AD. Also, current through P <coughs> equals current through Q. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what I'm going to do is, after the point at the top, I'm going to call this current here I1, and here 
I two <coughs> and back to I. And the reason I'm doing that is because no current really, I, I know it looks a bit confusing because I have my two arrows going to the center. Yes, so I know it looks confusing, but you can think about it like this. There's no current moving through the center. So it's like all the charge goes up the top. So it's I1 and it's still I1. And then it's I2 and it's still I2. Okay, so if it's confusing, you can just remove those two arrows here. And you can just know that the G is zero. So the current just goes around and comes back together like this. Okay? Right. So let's see what we can say using Ohm's law. Why is the galvanometer used to the uh, Galvanometers are really good when the current is really, really small. So an ammeter... There might be a little current, and the ammeter will still show zero. But a galvanometer is very, very, very sensitive. Any current will cause it to turn on. But you're right. Like If you had a really good ammeter, you could use that. But a galvanometer would be more appropriate. I can continue. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what we can make with Ohm's law. So here there's a voltage. So I'll call it V. Now what did I say yesterday about the voltage when it splits? Same, same or different? Same. same. So the voltage here is V and here is V. And uh, let's see what we can make with Ohm's law. So we have V, v equals I or... And then here we get V equals I or. Okay. And then here is the voltage the same or different at the top here in this one? Is this the same V as this one? No. Yeah, because it's going through another resistor, isn't it? So it's a bit like the potential divider. But at least we know the voltages here are the same. So maybe I should call that one V1 actually and V1. And this one here, uh, V1 and then V1. Now, um, sorry, this book is not good for the proof. It was better than the other book. Also, current through P equals current through Q, and current through R equals current through X. Therefore, IP equal. Okay, so I one P. So voltage there equals voltage there, and the same. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just call the voltages in the other one V two or something. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So you get for the next two the same result. Uh, v two equals I1 or 3 and then V2 equals I2 or 4. Okay. Yeah, something wrong with this one? Um, I actually am starting to think that the voltage is the same for all of them, maybe. The resistance should be the same. Then, yes. So, R1 equals R2, R3, R4. No, no, this is right. Yeah. I think we're happy with why the voltage is the same at the start because, as we said yesterday, when you have a cable and it splits, the voltage there it is the same at both. Yeah. And in the second case, it's kind of similar. You have two cables and they come together. So it's the same except in your mind you're just picturing it backwards. So it's two voltages, they're actually the same because afterward, it's the same. It's just 
it's minus, it's backwards. So if I have one voltage and it splits into two wires, in each wire, the same voltage. The second case is the same, the two wires are coming together. So the voltage here is the same as here. Uh, I know it seems different because it's backwards, but for a circuit diagram, the direction actually doesn't really matter. It just changed from a plus to a minus. So all the ideas are still the same. Huh? Yes, yes, which will be much easier to use than Ohm's law all the time. Yeah. So in the first two, I have V1 and V1, so I can make them equal, and I get I1 or 2 equals I2 or 1, and then here I get I1 or 3 equals I2 or 4. Now, here I can say I1 over I2 equals R1 over R2, and then here I can say I1 over I2 equals R4 over R3. So what do you think I'm going to say next? Yeah, what's wrong? Is the current determined the same for everything? Which ones now? I1 and I2 can be different, yeah. But the I1 at the start and at the end are the same thing. Is that what you're asking me? Like, is the I1 on the left and the right the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. So what do you think I'm going to do next if I have this result? Make them equal. So I get this result. R1 over R2 equals R3 over R4. R4 over R2. Oh, sorry. I have it upside down. Thank you. That's if you go around like what I did, starting here and go or one, two, three, four, around like that. Now, why is that result useful? Well, let me tell you why it's useful. The reason the result is useful is because this is how you can find out how much resistance is in a resistor. Okay? Let's pretend that you have a box of resistors. Look up, look at me. You have a box of resistors. Okay? And if you have one resistor you don't know, let's say it's R4, but you do know all of these, then you can know what R4 is. And this is what people used to do to find the resistance in a resistor. What they do is they take their resistor and they put it at R4. Okay? Then they have a big box of resistors and they put in different values and they keep putting in different values until the galvanometer is zero. And then when it's zero, this is true. Okay? Now, you might say, well, this isn't a good way to do it because you have to keep changing the resistor. So there is another one I'm going to do which is better but it has the same idea and the same formula. So we need to do this first. Okay? So that's our result. Yep? What current split to I1 and I2? Oh, we did this yesterday. When we have one current and the cable splits, the current in each is different. But we said for voltage, uh, the voltage stays the same. So the double limit is the I1 change. The galvanometer doesn't move because the current going down and going up yeah, cancels. Yeah. Going through the wire the Yeah. What's the current? Is it still I one? Ah, uh, it's um, no. We don't. We don't know what it is, but we do know that the one going down and the one going up are the same, so they cancel. So you're right. There is a current going down, but there's also a current going up. They cancel each other, so the total is zero. But no, uh, you're asking me, like, is I1 going down? We don't know. It'd be something else like I3. Yes? But with these formulas, it works for that diagram. No, no, this is the formula for this special circuit. Right. So there's no any automatic way to go there? No, no, no. This is like the potential divider, this is a standard, standard diagram, standard circuit. So we have potential divider, Wheatstone bridge, and then there's one more for us to do to learn. Yeah. If the 
I want to get the chip like if I change this to I want the white kind of chip will be to R three. If I want Yeah, the current changes when it's going through R two because of the wireless. Yeah. Why need to change when it's going through R two? Because the wireless change. Ah, but none of the current got diverted downwards. Right. Yeah, the current's gone up yeah. and none of it went straight down. It just went up and around. Because there's no current running through the middle. Yeah. But can I go on now? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Now, I'm scrolling down. So the next one. Uh, it's meter bridge and it's like the Wheatstone Bridge. So, so we had that with Wheatstone Bridge? Yeah, that's all we needed was to form that formula. But you said there was another formula for... Which is going to be this. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's try and draw this here as best I can. So, here... I've got a big resistor and then here I got my battery oh that's come on uh, battery okay and then here uh, it goes I got that yeah and then here there's a little connection but you can move this one and then here it goes straight down Hold on, I'll explain it now. Yeah, it is like a variable resistor. What I'm saying here is this one, you can move it. Okay, so I have it connected here, but you can slide it to the left or to the right. It's like a leg. Huh? It's like a leg. What do you mean? What you need to slide? Rheostat. Like a rheostat, yeah. Yeah, just slide it along the wire, yeah. Can I call it um, No, but it's it's like a real stat, but it, it's not called the real stat, but it's nearly the same thing. Variable <coughs> uh, Also not called this. Well, that's a better name for it. Uh, this here we actually call it, uh, well, okay, variable resistor is fine. Uh, but we, we won't call it real stat. Okay. Which picture are you? Hold on, I need to make a little galvometer here. Now, in this look up. In this diagram here, uh, this is a battery, and this voltage here is a battery, but you don't know what the voltage is. Okay, so here's a battery, and here's a voltage, and we don't know what it is. But again, you move this until this galvanometer equals zero. That's what you want here. Okay. If you're looking for which diagram this is, it's on the bottom of page 17. Can you see it there? You can see it there? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so if you want, you can copy that diagram there. Okay, there's a bit more information on it, but that's what I'm trying to draw. Now, when uh, the w uh, such that there's no current through these, these two PDs are equal, and the potentiometer is said to be balanced. The balance length L1 is measured. If the resistance, okay, so unknown potential difference V is I R, and then the other one V is um, I R as well. You get some similar result. 
Okay. This here is like what you said, Tanish, the variable resistor. So the thing with variable resistors is if it's twice as long, the resistance is twice as big. Yeah. So here, let me call this length here L1. L1. And let me call the total length L. So you have resistance is equal to the length multiplied by some number. We don't know what number. So for example, here, when it's at L1, the resistance would be L1 multiply K. And if it was the full length, the total resistance could be L times K. And K, we don't know what it is. It depends on the resistor. But the important thing is, if I make it twice as big, then it's twice as much resistance. So the resistance is equal to the length multiplied by some constant. That's all you need to know. So we have these two formulas to do with the resistance. Okay. Now, we also know that the galvanometer is zero. So there's no current actually going uh, through the galvanometer there, just like with the Wheatstone bridge. Okay. So we can actually use all of these results now to get a formula that can tell us the voltage that we don't know. See where the question mark is. So if you want, you can say, oops, the voltage in V1 is equal to the current multiply uh, the length times R. Uh, they call the constant R, I call it K, doesn't matter really. Okay, so let me draw the current here. So you have here, positive goes around, goes around. Now what happens here? It should split, shouldn't it? So it goes here, and then it goes here. But this is positive, and this one here is negative. This one here is positive, and this one's negative. And you remember yesterday I said, if you put your batteries the wrong way around, what happens to the voltage? There's no voltage. Okay, so at the same time, with this battery, there's a current going up here. And uh, it's going around that way. So it's like it's trying to cancel this. Now, what happens is it does cancel it. Because there's no current running through here. So these two do cancel. So a bit like with the Wheatstone Bridge, all the current goes through here. So I'll try and draw this. So there's the source of current for the second part. This one here? Yeah, the, the one you marked in the red. Here? Oh, this one? Yeah. Well, just one second. Uh, <coughs> I think, yeah, it cancels here as well. Well, that's wrong. It just doesn't go down. It does. It doesn't. Doesn't on go the down. These two cancel. Yeah. So here you're saying. Yeah, it just doesn't go down at all because it's plus. I was trying to draw it. It can't go from plus to plus. Yeah. So these ones here cancel. So it's zero then. Okay. I think that's enough to say. And there's nothing here as well. It's zero. Now we can say the voltage here, let me call it V1. V1 equals I times R. Because if you think about it, there's like the resistor here. You see that? Yes. So it's like the resistors here. So you get V1 equals I R1. But what does R1 equal? Um, L1K. So you get V equals I L1K. What's K constant? It's some constant for the resistor. Yeah. L1K is something new to do. Yeah. No, K we don't know. It's to do with the resistor. So, remember I said... Where is the K of it's not on the diagram. Is it an internal resistance or what? No. It's, it's, it's 
Yeah, it's like a recess oh, okay, okay. It's okay? Yes. All right. uh, so we have voltage equals I L1K. I think in the book maybe they call it Bohr or something. Okay. Should it be V1 also? Oh yeah, sorry, that should say V1, yeah. Okay, continue with that. Uh, v equals uh, that one there. Uh, V1, thank you. Okay, now let the potential difference across the whole wire be V. So now we're going to look at the whole wire here. Everything. So if I look at the whole thing, I get V equals I L K. This is looking at the whole thing now. And this battery here is V. So I know it's a bit, un it's not clear to see, but what's happening is I'm looking at this piece now. Seven. One second. For this part here, I'm looking at the top. And then for this part here, I'm looking at the bottom. Yes, Tanish. So, uh, last class you told us that the resistance works after the distance is been good. I mean, like the real standard. Right? Yeah. So in this case, there should be like the resistance should be after the point where it's being moved. Why is that like? Ah uh, no no, uh, it's like two circuits. If you look at the top circuit, it starts at the battery, and then it goes around down through the whole resistor, and back to the start. See, it's not quite like a real start. If you look at the bottom one, the bottom one goes up. It goes through some of the resistor. And then it comes back down. It doesn't go through the whole thing. Is this what you're asking me about yeah, the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for the top one, it goes through the whole thing. For the bottom one, it only goes through part of it. Yeah. Um, you know, it actually might help if you think about it like this. That big variable resistor, in your mind, you can think of it as two <coughs> resistors stuck together. So the first resistor is from the start to the middle. And then the piece at the end is like a second resistor. So the first resistor, uh, the battery at the bottom and the battery at the top, they go through the first resistor. But the second resistor, what goes through the second resistor? Only the battery at the top. Because the battery at the bottom, it cuts out before the end. Yeah. It doesn't have to be pictured like that. So this is the same as this diagram. Resistor here. Resistor here, battery here, and then I'll do it in red. Uh, there was another one here, but you don't know the voltage. It's like this diagram. So if you were to look at this battery, it goes around, around, through here, and back. And then if you were to look at this battery, it goes around here. But uh, these are made to cancel. And they are made to cancel. <coughs> so if they cancel, it means there's zero here. It doesn't, I mean, it's gone. It's cancelled. Yeah. So the galvanometer shows up as zero. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Does that help, Tanish, to have it like this? Yeah, okay. So I can go back to the original now? Yeah. Okay, so now we take our two results and put them together. So we have, where is it, here, and we have this one here. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'll get rid of the K. I'll say K equals V1, actually K over IK, actually, yeah. I can say IK equals V1 over L1. And then here I can say IK, IK equals V over L. So you can make them equal. You get V1 over L1 equals V over L. So you get this result in the end. V1 equals L1 over L multiply V. So what does this let you do? <coughs> let you find the V1, the voltage, in the second battery. 
if you know the voltage of the top battery. So you, what you have to do is you have to move it until you get zero current. And then when you get zero current, you can use this formula. And this formula tells you what the voltage V1 is, which you don't know. <coughs> so this is like a voltmeter. What's wrong, Joshua? I don't get how current moves into copper moves. It doesn't. That shouldn't really be there. So how do you measure? Yeah. So uh, picture this. You have a big variable resistor here. You have a battery. You know the battery's voltage, okay? And you connect the battery up to the resistor. Then you have another battery, you don't know its voltage, and you connect it up to the other half. And then you slide this until you get no current. G is zero. And you stop it. G is zero. Then what you do is you measure the length compared to the total length. So for example, if this is 20 centimeters and it's one meter long, it's 0 0.20 over 1 times the voltage in the battery you do know. So in other words, this here that you find the voltage in a battery that you don't know, if you know the voltage in one battery that you do have, you know, it's like comparing the two. And so I said just about that it's like a voltmeter because it can tell you the unknown <coughs> voltage. So it's a type a voltmeter. It's not like a good voltmeter because the problem with this voltmeter is you have to slide it until you get G is zero. Okay? But I mean the reason we're doing this is because they're famous circuits. Um, in the exam So why would they call it a meter? Uh, I think the use of the word meter there might be just to mean to measure something, like a voltmeter. And bridge, maybe, because I think bridge is the name of this type of circuit, like Wheatstone Bridge. Uh, it's like the category of circuit, bridges. So because with bridges, I think it's usually that you're trying to balance the G to be zero. Yeah? So the current from the battery also goes on to the it don't, uh, doesn't actually manage really to get there, does it? Because it cancels the one coming down. It's a bit like in the Wheatstone Bridge again. Remember the current in the center going down cancels the one going up? So you have a choice in your head. You can think about it as there's no current, that it's zero. Or you can think about it as the current going down and the current going up are the same. Uh, I don't know which way you prefer to think about it. It seems like both ways are not happy with it. It's okay. I don't understand how it can you go to both me to because it goes from plus to plus, it can go through plus and plus. That's what I can understand. You have two pluses and yeah. you show that current goes from plus to plus. It goes from plus to minus. No, I've I've tried to draw it in red and blue on purpose. The blue one is the <coughs> current coming out of the top battery. The red one is the current coming out of the bottom battery. If you, hang on, if you have two batteries together, all that happens is the <coughs> current cancels. But you can still have a current flowing if one of the batteries is bigger than the other. So for example, if this is one volt battery and this is nine volt battery, I put them together, I make 10. But if I turn this one around, it's like I make an eight volt battery. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you can still have a current going when the batteries are opposite if one is bigger than the other, okay? Uh, which actually comes up a lot in the Kirchhoff problems, circuit diagrams. Yeah, no? Uh, don't worry about the proof, because it is a proof. What you need to know is the result of these circuit diagrams. So the first one, we had, uh, what was our result? V1 equals R1 over R1 plus R2 times V. For our second one, what was it? It was R1 over R2 equals R4 over R3. And then for this one, it's V1 equals L1 over L times V. 
Uh, what will happen in the exam is you may get one of these, but they're not so common. What's more common is what I'm going to do next. But I need to do it because in the syllabus it says students should know these three special circuits. What is the next book? Hmm? What is the next book? Kirchhoff, we can get that mm -hmm. it, It's actually not so bad. It was last year, right? It comes up most years. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. So we, this formula is for the uh, meter bridge. Uh, yeah, okay. I want to do some examples, okay? I think this is what we need. So if we go to do the questions. Uh, uh, possibly. But Kirchhoff is missing from this chapter. So the ever come up for a battery from the negative side? Only if there's another battery bigger than it connected to it. You can force it out. That's how this works. But then this doesn't apply if that happens. Because the positive side of the battery is transferring the current. Yeah. But if you have a bigger battery, which could be like this one here, connected to it, it can push the current through the wrong way. Yeah. Okay, can we have a look at... Let's see. Well, okay, before we do Kirchhoff, there's some small thing to do with you. You've done ions in chemistry, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, only, it's only short. Don't worry. Huh? It's not easy. What's not zero? Mm -hmm. Going up and down. It just pushes it to the other side. But the negative side just becomes positive and pushes it down to the bottom. I don't know what you're asking me. If the compulsion yes. is not really zero. Go ahead. The compulsion is not really zero because the battery pushes the positive side of the to the negative side. Uh, it actually pushes it and cancels it. Yeah. Now, you could have the galvanometer not be zero, and that means the battery in the top push the current all the way backwards, is, which is what you were talking about. Or it could uh, not be zero, and your battery could be so, on the top could be so weak that the battery on the bottom actually pushes it the right way around, you know? Or in this case, the galvanometer is zero, which means the current coming out at the bottom and going down to the top cancel, which means no current is flowing on that strip there, just like with the Wheatstone Bridge and the center of the bridge. Um, I think we're worrying about this too much. I'm going to continue, okay? This is, uh, it's taken up more time than it should have. Okay, if we look at the bottom of page 17, Now, uh, what is an ion? You've done that in chemistry, haven't you? What's an ion? Charge. Charge. Charge, isn't it? Yeah. So, how is it different to an electron if it has a charge? An electron has a charge. Yeah, it could be balanced by the proton. But an ion, what is an ion? It's an atom, isn't it? But it has a charge because why would it have a charge? Yeah, different number of electrons and protons. Yeah. So here we said we can have a current when there's electrons moving, but it doesn't need to be electrons, it could be ions. Okay? So for our battery, it's electrons, but it could be ions. And if you look at the next page, uh, page 18. You got that? Electrolysis, yeah. Do you see that diagram on the left of the page there? 
So what you have there is uh, two pieces of metal, um, different pieces of metal. So here, which ones do they use? They don't actually say. One is the yeah, cathode. One is the anode. Uh, okay. Uh, usually, oh here it is at the bottom. Consider copper sulfate with copper uh, electrodes. The solution contains copper ions with a double positive charge. Okay. So I'll just draw this. So what we got? We got positive here, we got negative here. So this positive goes down here. Now, uh, this will be positive and this one will be negative. So you know if you have positive, what charge attracts positive? Negative. negative. So what happens is in the water here, the negative ions get pulled this way. And then the positive ions get pulled onto this one. Yeah. So the solution contains copper ions with a double positive charge, Cu2+, plus, and sulfate ions with a double negative charge. So the positive one is this, Cu2 uh, positive, and then the negative one is this, SO4. Two minus. These are the ions. These are the ions, yeah. So the positive ions is this one, Cu, it's a positive two, and the negative ones is this one, SO4, it's a negative two charge. Uh, do you write the two at the top here? Probably not. Or mm -hmm. You do, yeah? Yeah, okay, good. Good. Right. When you connect it to the batteries, the atoms are deposited on the cathode. So, do, 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 yeah. Sulfate ions collect around the anode and are most likely reaction to occur there. Okay. Yeah, I'll just leave it actually with that. So, what's going to happen here? Uh, which one is the copper? Cu or SO? Cu. Cu. And which one is that moving on to? It's moving on to the positive plate because what's the ion charge here? It's negative. Yeah. So what's going to happen is there's going to be copper that collects on the first one. That's so two minus one. Yeah? So what is good? This isn't this sulfur. The SO4? Yeah. It donates electrons. Huh? The sulfate donates electrons and the copper exception. Yes. And the reason I'm saying this is because this is what they do to put gold or silver or other materials on top of mouths. You know, like mm -hmm. electric tape. Good, you know this word. Oh good. Did you do you do this in chemistry or you just knew uh, it? In high school. In high school. Yeah. So this is just electroplating. So does anyone have any gold plated? No? Oh, what the heck is that? Give me that. Yeah. That's a legal. I'm gonna give it back to him. Uh, so this, okay, it's not, well, it might be gold, but if it was, it's not gold, okay, if it was gold, it's only gold on the outside. So what they do to do this is they do something like this. They take something like steel, they put it inside this solution, and they connect it with a battery, and then on the other side, maybe steel, maybe gold, or silver. And then they turn the battery on, and what happens is the gold ions will stick onto the other metal, like what's happening here. Now, you said this is called electroplate, that's right. Uh, but the other word I'm looking for here is actually on the chapter, it's called, there it is actually on page 17, electrolysis. But you said electroplate. So electroplate is what uh, you it's might call the in, informal, you know, what the, what the jeweler might call it, electroplate. But in chemistry, it's electrolysis. So electrolysis is a process, electrolysis is a application. 
Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like, uh, a tumor would not use the word electrolysis. They would use electrophase. Yeah. You're right, fine. Electrophase the application. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't need to do anything with you with this, okay? The only thing I need to say about this for physics is that electrons have charge and ions have charge. And ions you do in chemistry. Okay? And one application of ions and batteries and currents is this, where you can get one material to stick on another material. That's all you need to know from this. In fact, all you really need to know is the vocabulary, which you already know from chemistry. So ion you know, uh, electrolysis we know, electroplate we know, uh, oh yeah, and then the other words which are new uh, is cathode and anode. Well, yeah, no, which one is which? Which one is called the cathode and which one is called the anode? Positive, 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 positive. This one here is cathode or anode? Cathode. We call this one the cathode and this one here we call the anode, which should be actually on the diagram. It is, yeah, if you look at page 18. Cathode and this one's called anode. Uh, you also used the word this week, Joshua, um, potential plates. Yeah. 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 So we use cathode and anode when we talk about plates as well. So in other words, cathode means the negative plate and anode means the positive plate. That's all you need to know, just vocabulary. Okay. Uh, let's see what to do next. Um, I will go on to now... What page is that on? It's not here. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing it. Where is it? No. But do Kirchhoff later then, I guess. Yeah, but in the book there's some questions on it, so we'll have to leave those for the moment. No, I don't. Do, I want to do more circuit examples. Okay, let's look at ten. Can you go to page twenty-two? Twenty-two. Can you go to page twenty-two? Uh, you just need to do up to question thirteen. So. You've already done up to 9, actually. So just 10, 11, 12, 13 left to do. So let's do 10 together. Can you have a look at number 10? 11, 12, 13 is for Monday. Yes. It will be, yes. Tuesday. Tuesday, yes. yes. Yeah. Can we have a look at 10, please? The circuit diagram shows a 12-volt battery connected across a potential divider or by slide in contact P, Potential divider is linked to a resistance wire XY to an ammeter. A voltmeter is connected across the wire XY. <coughs> Explain with reference to this circuit the term potential divider. Ah, oh, no, that's stupid. Don't do that. So what's uh, the potential wire? Potential divider is another word for a meter bridge. No, no, this is the wire XY. Oh, that's the, ne that's the name for that variable resistor. The resistance wire. No, forget about 10. And 11. No, there's only calculations in the exam. So I just need to look for the calculation questions. You look relieved. Yes. Uh, 11. No. Let's do capacitors. Uh. Capacitors will take like 15 minutes. Just uh, two rules. You're right, there is only two rules. All right, let's do capacitors. So. Uh, okay. Go on to capacitors then. 24. So, Tal, tell us what a capacitor is then. 
You are eager to do it. Do you know what it is? No, no. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, so basically, the car just flows and goes to these two, two plates. Two plates, yep. And they're not connected with each other, but the charge is going from one another. Yep. They, they like collect? That's it, they collect the charge. Yeah. So a capacitor is a way of collecting charge, yeah. So how? Huh? Kind of like a battery, except battery makes the charge. Capacitor just uh, collects the charge. Okay, capacitor then. All right. So here, imagine this here, and then this one here. And as you said, Tal, these are not touching. Okay. And we have a current that goes along here. And what happens is the charge collects inside of it. Now, remember we were talking about the people walking down the hall. So if 10 people go in, 10 people come out. In this case, this is not true. So what would happen is 10 coulombs go in, but maybe 5 coulombs come out. So what's happened to the other 5? It's collected inside of it. And then when it gets full, then the 10 coulombs goes through normally. So it, like, it's like it fills up with water, and then once the bucket is full of water, any more water you put in just goes straight out. Okay? So capacitor collects the charge. So that's actually the definition of capacitor. Capacitor holds or collects a small charge. So we'll write that down, definition. Can they ask this one? Yes, they can ask this one, yep. Is it? Where is it? It's oh, yeah. Yeah. Store is the normal verb we use, but you can use collect or hold as well. Okay. Uh, a capacitor is a device that stores a small charge. Yeah, yeah. Capacitors usually only hold it, can hold a small charge only. Some capacitors can hold more charge. Some capacitors hold very small charge. So we need. Huh? What's that? Oh yeah, that'd be tiny capacitors. Yeah, yeah. So we need a way to see how big uh, our capacitors are. So that is called. Capacitance, yes. Is it charge over voltage? Yes. Yeah. Capacitance. So there, there. there, yeah. So capacitance measure of how much charge a capacitor can hold. And as you said, you have the formula there, C equals Q over V. So let me give you a simple example here. Here's our capacitor. And then here's our battery. Let's say it's a 10 volts and then you turn this on and then there's a charge that builds up in here so the charge builds up and let's say the charge is uh, 5 coulombs so the capacitance is 5 over 10 it is 0 0.5 coulombs per volt Yes. Yeah. With one product, it's already big too. Yes. Yeah. It's too big for yeah, the whole earth. Is, I don't remember how much. Yeah. So we often end up using micro RLs. So yeah, five uh, Q equals five C is is. is how much charge? Per second. No, no, uh, good question. It's the total. So you turn the battery on. You let the charge build up. 
And then when it's full, that's what the five is. Oh. It's how much it can hold. So the full charge. The full charge, yeah. Yeah. You can actually hear capacitors charge up. Yes. You can hear it. Now, you need a very <coughs> old camera. You know the old cameras where you press the button and then you have to wait for the flash? Yeah. Or in the hospital, mm -hmm. with the two paddles, yeah. and they go yes. on the patient? You can hear it charge up. So you know that sound? That's the sound of the capacitor filling up with a charge. The same with the old cameras. You press the button and you can hear it filling up. <coughs> the capacitor is charging up. Okay? So the formula is quite simple. The bigger the C is, the bigger the capacitor is. So the C capacitance, it, it's, it, it's like it tells you the strength of the capacitor. So a big C, so you know in the hospital when they use these machines on you, you have a heart attack. That would be a very big capacitance, okay? But then a camera, you know, would be a small one. So the type C is the Coulomb and the C capital is... Yeah, sorry, that C is Coulomb, but that C is capacitance, yeah. What? Now, that C there is capacitance. That C there is Coulomb. Now, as you said, Tal, there's actually a special name for C, uh, Coulomb per volt. Yeah, C over V Coulomb per volt, that's called Farad, or just F. So, 1 C per V is 1 Farad, 1 F. Okay. <coughs> okay. And how can you make a capacitor? It's actually very, very easy to make a capacitor. All you need to do to make a capacitor is have two pieces of metal very close together, but not touching. And they must be inside a vacuum as well. That's all you need to make a capacitor, okay? Two pieces of metal, they're really close together, and it's inside a vacuum, and that's it. Easy to make, yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Let's go on then. So page 25 now. Oh, yes. Just something to be careful about, which I've not said yet. Oh, not yet. No, no, not yet. Positive, negative. Which way does the current move? From positive to negative, like this. This is the I. Which way do the electrons move? The opposite, yeah. So you just need to be very careful here. The electrons are actually moving around the other way. Okay. So when an electron goes to the right, we say there's a current going to the left. This is unfortunate when people called electrons. You had a choice. You could have said electrons were positive and then protons are negative. It doesn't matter. And then you could say electrons are negative, protons are positive. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that they're opposite. So people decided to call electrons negative. Yeah? What's wrong? Oh, jeepers. This is going to be bad. I have to close that before it shuts up. Phew. All right. It'll come back in a second. So, what do we call electrons? Negative, protons positive. It actually would have been better if we called it the other way around. If we said electrons are called positive and protons are called negative. Because if it was that way around, it means in our circuit diagram, when the current goes this way, then the uh, electrons would go the same way. But positrons the same as electrons? No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the word, it, you know, here, left, right. We call this one left, we call this one right. Tomorrow, if I swapped everything and called this one right, this one left, it doesn't change anything. If everything is swapped, you get it? if I just swap the word, it's still, opposite, yeah. it's still opposite, yes. So we call the electron negative. I'm saying it would have been better if we called it positive because it meant the electrons and the current 
would move in the same direction on our diagram? Unfortunately not. Okay? So when the current goes this way, the electrons go that way. We just have to live with it. Okay. Right. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, talking about that. What? <laughs> what? Right, come on. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's not so interesting for you today. Uh, we will look at now... I think we... Yeah, okay. We're going to look at the two formulas now. Yeah, which we don't really cover. But you're right, if the plates are closer together, it has more capacitance. But that's not actually on the syllabus, so I'm just going to skip it. Okay. Um, right, so capacitors. This one here, C1. This one here, C2. So if you put the two capacitors together, you can make a bigger capacitor. So what is the total capacitance here? Yes. It's actually not C1 plus C2. It's this formula here. But if you put them in parallel, like this, then it will be C equals C1 plus C2. So it's actually the opposite of the resistors, the formulas. So when they're in series, it's one over, and when they're in parallel, it's just added together. That's a different case when it comes to resistors. Yeah, it's the opposite way around. Yeah. So just be careful about that in the exam. Uh, let's have a look at some examples, actually, now. Um, no, actually, let's do one more formula and then we'll look at examples. So the next formula is when... What is wrong? Just look up here, please. Do we have to worry about Q's law? Yes, yes, we'll get to all of this in time. Can we just worry about one thing at a time? So when the capacitor charges up, it stores energy inside of it. It stores charge. So you can actually do some work. So when this capacitor is charged up, it has energy inside of it. And the formula for how much work or how much energy is inside of it. Does anyone know it? <coughs> yeah, that's uh, well, one of them. But the half, yeah, a half CV squared. CV squared. Yes. It looks like it, doesn't it? It's almost like the kinetic energy version for a capacitor. That's voltage, yeah. No, and, and yeah, work done or energy storage? Yeah, work done. In other words, uh, like with the camera, this tells you how much energy is built up in the capacitor, so how much work you can do, how many joules. So, as you can see, if you have a bigger capacitor, you can do more work. Yes. Makes sense, doesn't it? The V is the velocity. Uh, v is the voltage. Yeah. No, but he's right. Like, it does look a lot like kinetic energy, yeah? So the C is like the mass. The voltage is like the velocity. Yeah, no, it doesn't happen by accident, okay? Uh, this form that looks like kinetic energy, you know, and that means that there's similar ideas <coughs> under, underlying it. So voltage is speed. No, no, you see, the, the, but the danger is you might generalize too much. No, I'm just saying that in physics, a lot of the formulas have the same form, and there's a reason for that. Like, for example, we have F equals G M1, M2 over R squared. But there's actually other formulas that look a lot like that, which maybe you've done like Coulomb, yes. F equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And it's not by accident. So yeah, it looks a bit like kinetic energy. But it's not. It just looks like it. Okay, let's do our first example then with capacitors. 
Yes, let's. Uh, so go to page 31. And let's look at the picture on the bottom of 31. Capacitor, 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 capacitor right here. Capacitor, batteries. Okay. And the voltage in this battery is E. This is C1, this is C2, this is C3. In this circuit, C1 equals 2 microfarads. C2 equals 0 0.5 microfarads. And C3 equals 0 0.5 microfarads. For each capacitor, calculate the charge. Okay, so what's the formula for... Oh, and we told the voltage? is 6. Okay. What's the formula for charge? I gave it at the start of this section. Q equals... CV. So if I want the charge in each of these, I just take the C and multiply it by 6. Okay, so we get... Um, let's see. C1, C2, C3. Okay, so what's C1? What's wrong? C1 is... C1, what is it? Two micro. Yeah, sorry, I meant to say Q1. Okay, Q1? 12. 12. What's the unit? Microcoulombs. Micro Microcoulombs. The next one? Three microcoulombs. Three microcoulombs. And the next one? Three microcoulombs. No, well, Q is charge, yeah. I'm using this formula. Did you write this one down? No. That would be the problem. Q equals CV. Yeah? Yes. Oh, but I gave it to you. I just add everything and multiply with the voltage. Oh, please. Please. Teach, you're so tired. Because just give the me one. The question was to find the charge in each of them. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Joshua, if I go back here, no, you, yeah, okay. It, I took it from this one. Yeah. I'm, I'm about yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it just we don't have the I or the T here. Yeah. All right. What I'd like everybody to do now for me is I want you to add all those capacitors together to make one capacitor. Three, two, three. three. So add all three of those capacitors together to make one capacitor. Three. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the answer is three. Three, three. three micro or just yeah, three? Three micro. three micro. Okay. So I'll draw this again, but with the tree in it. So here is six volts. And then what one, uh, <coughs> what one was here? We said... Guys, right. I'm going to wait two minutes. I want you all to, I don't care if you did it, I want you to do it again. Add those three capacitors, I want the capacitance, the total capacitance. Yeah, so totally it's in parallel series. Now I'm going to pretend that you're going to do it for the next one minute, so that you can be confident it's right. And if you've done it, just double check it. Then I'll ask you. I want the total C. Okay. Now, what did you get for the total capacitance? Two or three. Two or three. So, what form? What one should you do first? The C one, C two, or C three? Which C two and C three? They just add straight together. So the total would be one microfarad. But then we have to use the other formula to add it with C1. So you have one over one plus one over two, which is three over two. Three over two. But that's one over C. So then it's in total two over three. Good. Now give me the Q on this. Yeah, 
So what's the Q? Four. Four micro coulombs. Micro -coulomb. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. These two are the same, aren't they? Uh, but here we got four microcoulombs, and here, well, you can see that the total is more than four. So just think for a moment, and I want to know which of the two is right for the total charge. Is the total charge going to be uh, 12 plus 3 plus 3, or is the total charge going to be 4? No, 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 no. I want you to think for a minute, then I'll ask for your reason. This is thinking time. Thinking time. Okay. So, which do you think is the right answer? The 18 or the 4? Yes. But why? Mm -hmm. What? Uh, no. Which one do we think? We were right. It is, should be four, not eighteen. Because what the term is going to be told to me through that the capacitance of two plus two six and one of the four plus one plus six. That would be four. For the first one, yes. if you add it together, like what to get the total capacitance. Yes. Yeah, that's what the second one is. Yeah, I add it together to get the total capacitance. Like to do for the charge, you read it for capacitance two for the charge, and you get four. Yeah, yeah. that's the point. That maybe that's because um, the charge that they have inside of them that yeah. they store it's the same one, and the twelve is. Um, the charge from the first one, then it goes to, to the second and the third. You're right. You both have the right idea. The point is this. If I have four coulombs here and four coulombs here, that does not necessarily mean in total eight. So what I did in the first one, that's not the correct total. It actually is like four. And the reason, again, is like what you're saying, Carl, is when the first charge moves into the second one, you know, it doesn't quite behave simply like 4 plus 4. Okay? So the point here is that if you want the total charge, it's much better if you get the total capacitance first. Then from that, you can get the total <coughs> charge. Okay? This, I've seen this as an, uh, in an exam uh, a few times. They would have like three capacitors and they ask you for the total charge. So the mistake students make will be to get the charge in each one and then add it together. That's wrong. What you should do is put the three capacitors together as one capacitor and then get the charge. Imagine that like a series of things. Yeah, just like with a circuit, you put the resistors together. Do the same thing here for capacitors. Okay. So I'd like to give you one to try. And I want you to tell me the total charge. Okay, so draw this one. Uh, 12 volts battery. And again, I'll make it easy. I'll just say the all are 2 microfarads. Each of these is two, each. Okay, give me how much charge can be stored in this circuit. Okay, work on that please. And then, sorry, once you have that one, I'd also like to know how much work can be done as well.
you got it for sure are you all finished or do you need more time Okay, so what's the total charge? 12 microfarads. Did you get that also? Oh, sorry, charge, yeah. 12 microcoulombs. Did you get that? Yeah. So if you have Q equals 12 microcoulombs, uh, what was the total capacitance, by the way? One. Yes. Pure accident that it happened so nicely. So one farad, microfarad. Yeah. Okay, so then we want to get the work done. So the work is a half C V squared. That's a half ten to the minus six twelve squared. So what's that? Uh 140. Yeah, if you want to write micro in here at the end, yeah. So it's 144 over 12. What's wrong? 72 times 10. Yeah, 72 micro joules. Joules work. That's not a lot. That's a very. The, very small amount of work that's stored. 72 microjoules. Okay. Now, oh, which diagram? What? That is okay. What I need to show you will take only two minutes. Can you have a look, please, uh, at the diagram on the top of 31, the graph? Can I scroll down? Yes. Yeah. Charge, voltage. Uh, so we'll talk about this a little bit more next time, but I just want to get you thinking about it. So remember we set up the camera or the machine, the capacitor charges up. But then what usually happens after it's charged? Yeah, the camera will flash. So in other words, it builds up, then, then it discharges. So does all the charge leave at the same time? No, it kind of it comes out like a current a little bit at a time. And then it comes out and then it decreases and there's no charge left. But the voltage that comes out is not constant. So at the start you have a high voltage and then it drops down. Okay. The same goes with the charge. You have a high charge at the start, yes? Then it drops down. So in this graph here, we have charge at the x-axis, voltage on the y-axis. So this is the voltage through the capacitor. And again, charge. So if you look at the graph, it goes straight up. So in other words, when you increase the charge, you get more voltage. I mean, this makes sense. If you think about your capacitor, the more charge that's inside of it, the more voltage it will make, the more work it can do. So in this graph here, what you need to picture is at the start, there's no charge. Then you put charge into it, and you get more voltage. So you might have something like this. No, what I... 1 over C? Yeah, I'm asking about the slope. Oh, the slope. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very good. You have Q equals CV. So V equals 1 over C Q. 
So the slope here, very good, Joshua, is 1 over C. And then as you said, uh, Tal, if you were to take the area here, this area, well, I'll take the whole thing. This area, what does that equal? Well, that's half, if I call this here Q, the base by the height. Okay. But we have a formula for Q. What's our formula for Q? Yeah, a half C V squared. And what's that? Energy. Energy. So in other words, on this graph, the area equals the energy. Uh, so you remember with Newton's graphs for the motion, what's the area on that? Distance. Distance. So for these capacitors, what's the area? Energy. It's energy. Okay. Uh, and what's the slope? It's 1 over, one over C. Okay. So remember we were saying that the formula uh, Tanish looks like kinetic energy. Yeah. Again, we're drawing sort of comparisons because we're doing the same things. We're doing graph here. Okay. Now, I have in my graph with Newton, what goes on the x-axis? Newton. Time. And the y-axis? Velocity. Velocity, yeah. And what's on the y-axis here? Voltage. And what's the formula for energy? A half C V squared. So you can, yes, yes. You can see there's comparisons. I'm not saying voltage and velocity are the same. What I am saying is it has the same function. It goes on the y-axis in the graph. Okay, this is part of the reason why you see the same types of formulas. Okay, but there is a big difference. In Newton's graph, the area is distance. Whereas in this graph, the area is actually energy, which is quite a bit different. In the exam, uh, again, you could get a graph question where they give you some data and you have to draw the graph and then from the graph, you have to get the energy. Okay. So if my capacitor is charging up, if my capacitor is charging up, mm -hmm. what do you think the area represents? It's how much energy you put into the capacitor. And then if the capacitor is discharging, if there's energy coming out, or if there's charge coming out, then what does the energy represent? It's the energy the capacitor is releasing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at this graph, do you think it's charging up or discharging? It's not discharging, it's not <coughs> No, it has to be two in one of them. What do you think? Why, yeah, why do you say that? Because this is all like that. No, it's more to the What's that? Yeah? There's a lot of failure power. Yeah, uh, the, the thing is, we don't actually know. It is charging up or discharging, but you can't actually tell from this graph. And the reason you cannot tell from this graph is because this graph is missing something. Time. Oh, yeah. Yes. You see, you don't know where the start and the end is. Maybe the start is at the top. And maybe the end is at the bottom. Then it's discharging. Or maybe the start is at the bottom and the end is at the top. Then it's charging. So in the next class, we'll look at graphs that have charge and time. And then we can see if it's charging up or if it's discharging. And we look at time constant. Tau. Yeah, you would need to use arrows to indicate, yes. But from this you can't know. Wait, I need to tell you homework. You already gave it some homework. No, no, I said not to do those questions. No, but they don't. Okay. Yeah, I, the, all I want you to do is these capacitor diagrams. Okay, so can you look at the page? Capacitors. Page 39. I want you to do the ones with the diagrams. So that's number two. Uh, number three. But only three B, the diagram part. 
Good. And then 6b. So why not be? Because you trust so. It will not bother me. Yes. If you want to do it, do it. Yeah. Uh, 6b. And um, I did say 2a, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. yeah 2a, and then 3b, and then 6b. Yeah. You guys make me so tired. Really, so tired. I know, but 